Hi everyone, it's Friday. You know what that means? I'm doing Who Would Wins! Don't know that- he's like, wait, no, he doesn't do that on Fridays. I do now. Yeah, I, I feel like for the next week or two I'll probably just keep saying, just to let people know. Yeah, now Who Would Wins come out on Wednesdays as well, and there will be What Ifs on what Wednesdays. What Ifs come out on Wednesdays as well. Uh, who Would Wins come out on Fridays as well. And this one comes to us from YouTube King, who asked the question, Who Would End a Fight? Harry Potter versus Percy Jackson from the Percy Jackson series. Um, I can basically see where the comparison uh, could come between. They both have a movie franchise. They uh, both come from a large series of novels. Obviously, their adventures have continued since, like, their, another book, you know, uh, well, oh, God, A Cursed Child, was it, or something like that? Uh, that, that newest one. And Percy Jackson has far more than the two movies we've had him in, so... It wouldn't be fair for me to use the movie versions necessarily. I got them, obviously, for the thumbnail, but I'm not going to do that. So we're going to use what we have here. So Harry Potter was born to Lillian James Potter in uh, something, 1980-something, uh, something along those lines. Uh, you're a wizard, Harry, around his, I believe, his 11th birthday, something like that. Anyway, uh, he's very... He's very not. I would yeah. I'd say he's headstrong. However, he's also he's, he's very courageous. He is very you know his love, love, and you know sacrificing for the people he cares about. Very strong will. Also a bit of an idiot at times. Let's not let's not mince words. Despite the fact he's quite smart, he can also be kind of an idiot at points. Like maybe he shouldn't do this, Harry. We gotta try. It's like and now we tried because there's a giant now there's a giant man eating dog in front of us with three heads, one for each of us. Thanks, Harry. So, yeah, sometimes he can be a little bit of an idiot. Uh, but no, obviously he is a wizard. Now, in terms of his skills are actually considered highly, he's a highly skilled and a powerful wizard, particularly in the later years of his life. Uh, he became a skilled aura at the age of 26, and I'm reading this verbatim <laughs> right now, uh, including learning things like concealing disguises, stealth and tracking, potions and antidotes, uh, high transfiguration skills, uh, hit must, uh, Frequently transfigure and untransfigure uh, in their line of work. Great instinct and to do the right thing. Everything all... Uh, basic, basically, just wide general abilities that come of being an author, which is, I believe is like a dark wizard hunter, I believe, I think. Um, now, it's been said that it really his real uh, bread and butter is his... Well, bread and butter. The thing that he was most skilled at or is most skilled at is his abilities in defense against the dark arts. He was so good he beat Hermione out in his tests. People were like, oh, wow, he, this, this guy's good. Uh, he knows a stunning spell. It does what it sound, says. Disarming charm. Does what it says. And, uh, imp, uh, impendiment Kurt Jinx, which I already looked it up. I'll have to look it up again. Uh, impendiment. 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 Uh, that's what, okay, that slows down an object for about 10 seconds or so. doesn't affect everything, but it, it affects most things. Uh, and it can even, like, stop a wasp in flight for about 10 seconds. Full body binding curse, again, as it sounds. And then reductor curse, which is basically like a, uh, lift kind of spell. Uh, like, it gains, it gives lift or propels something. Uh, he's also skilled defending himself against dark creatures like Grindelwalds, Redcaps, Hinky Punks, Bogars, Urklings, and Dementors. The Dementors are kind of the big one on that, so, yeah. Um... Nothing else, much else to say along those lines. I mean, sure, he can, if he fought, he was a, this is a kid who was able at age, I want to say like 17, able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with a dark wizard, Voldemort, who's probably the strongest wizard at that time. He went, went to, he went to, he faced him a couple times throughout his life. So, yeah. Uh, he's a skilled duelist, including knowing things like Expelliarmus, which is essentially kind of a, uh, oh, God, how did Expelliarmus work again? Um... Or, or was that the, or is that the disarming charm? Now that I think about it, is that basically the, was that Expelliarmus was the disarming charm? Uh, uh, Expelliarmus. Oh yeah, well, okay. There you go. <laughs> that was the disarming charm. I only, I only always knew it as the actual Expelliarmus. That's what I always knew it as. Uh, okay, that was the disarming charm. So yeah, he, he was actually really good, skilled with that. Of course, dueling is just dueling. There's, it's not going to be the same in this fight. I mean, he'll be able to use it and is like, and be able to function like that. But uh, it, that's going to be how he kind of attacks his opponent in this case. But still, uh, he actually knows dark arts. Like he lo knows the, uh, see, so, you know, uh, words. God, I'd have to hear it pronounced, pr pronounced, pronounced. 
Infernoculus curse, which basically puts uh, is uh, bullet uh, boils on you. Uh, knockback jinx, which is knocks you back. Revulsion jinx, which revulsion jinx. Which one was that? Uh, I looked up a couple of. Oh, that no, that was the one that uh, uh, repel, uh, uh, repels objects or something. Okay, then what was the reductor one again? Uh, you'll have to forgive me. I like Harry Potter fine. I'm just not a Potterhead, so it's not. These aren't things I'll know right off the top. This is why I have the wikis up right now, <clears throat> and I mean the actual legit, not like Wikipedia, but the actual fan wikis that have all that legitimate information in there. Uh, let's see the reductor. Oh, the reductor curse is actually like literally can uh, be used to blast solid objects to bits. So it destroys things. Right on. It can destroy things pretty much to mist or ash. So, uh, yeah, that's a pretty useful uh, trick right there. Let me see here now. Uh, back to the actual dark uh, dark arts. Here we go. So, yeah, the revulsion jinx. That was revulsion jinx. The melophores. What the hell is a melophores jinx? I'll probably know it, but... Eh? Uh, it jinxed that encases the victim's head in pumpkin, although it appears, though... To those watching to transform the victim's head into a vomit, the clone can be shattered and free the victim, or can fall all apart in a short time. This looks like it's from a video game. That's dumb. <laughs> That's a dumb curse. That's a dark arts technique? That's a dumb curse. Uh, oh, and then, you know, you can use more powerful things like the blasting curse. Uh, what was that? Sephir, Sephir, that curse he learned in uh, the Half-Blood Prince. That basically... Um, uh, uh, Snape's new. That was basically like lots of blades kind of cutting you at the same time. He actually, he's even, he's used three of the unforgivable curses. Imperious, which I believe is the mind control. Crucius, which is the uh, torturing curse, though it was never really used effectively. Just cause, uh, kind of incapacitated someone. And, um, uh, he's never used the killing curse, but it's very likely he probably can. Uh, he rides a, a broomstick, a, which one was it now? Uh, I think it's uh, his broomstick, uh, which one he has right now. It's the fireball he still has. Uh, he can speak to snakes. Won't matter in this fight. Insight to Voldemort's mind. No, no, uh, help to the, no help to this. Master of death. And the scenario was helpful in this. That don't mean a thing. Potions won't... Uh, he's not coming... I don't... He's not going to come into the fight with potions available. That wouldn't be fair. Um, he's going to come in with his broom, uh, he's going to have his broom available, I'll even give him the, uh, I'll even give him the invisibility cloak, which pretty much makes you invisible, can still be heard, or smelled, but you're invisible, the death can't even find you, uh, transfiguring, you can transfigure most stuff, uh, Harry's also skill method form human transfiguration, which is known to be immensely difficult, he accomplished this during 1996, transfiguration lesson, where he succeeded in turning his eyebrow, bright, eyebrow bright yellow, ooh -hoo. So, compliment on transfiguration. Having traveled back in time, 1981, his friends can use human transfiguration to an impressive degree to disguise Harry as Voldemort. So, I, yeah, again, I didn't read the last book. Apparently, they turned into different people without using the freaking uh, polyjuice potion. Right on. Uh, charms. We've already gone over charms, but let's go over again. Light wand charm or uh, Loomis. Color changing charm. I don't even remember that one. Banishing Charm? Uh, I don't know the Banishing Charm off the top of my head. Obviously knows the Patronus, the Stag, and it repels evil. Uh, this, oh, this is from a game. Uh, the Banishing Charm is a Counter Charm to the Summoning Charm. Okay, you summon something, then you banish the thing that was summoned. Okay, so good luck on that. Uh, let's see here. Uh, freeze Charm, which I believe is kind of like a bit of a paralysis charm, or is it a, like, legitimate kind of ice charm thing? Um, <laughs> a freeze charm. Uh, yeah, a spell which immobilizes living targets, which is, yeah, that, so you have the freeze charm, but you also have that one, that reductor one, I would believe, which slows time down. Wouldn't you, living targets, the reductor would be good for inanimate objects, wouldn't you just use this one against living objects most of the time? I don't know. Uh, he can apparate, which is more or less kind of like a teleportation ability. Healing magic to some degree. Nonverbal and wellness magic. You can use that, though I don't believe... and Which only like people like Voldemort and um, Dumbledore were actually able to use. However, still... Yeah, I, it's never not demonstrated exactly who... Or uh, who... How powerful he is. He was able to like straighten up his room with just his hands and still. He's very resourceful. 
I believe. I got leadership skills, indomitable will. Apparently, he's got teaching skills. Uh, wand. Um, let's see now. I believe his wand is still. Wand, oh, Harry's wand broke during the 1997 skirmish with Night Eel. Uh, I'm I'm guess I'm guessing he got his wand fixed. Oh no, is no, it didn't get his wand f fixed. Uh, Draco Malfoy's wand won the Hawthorne wand allegiance after overpowering Draco Malfoy during the skirmish of Malfoy Manor. The wand was carried by him, Manor of the Second Wizarding War, and seeing Chin and bring. I don't know what happened to the wand after Harry. Okay, it still doesn't tell me what type of wand he uses. Not that it really matters in this case. He's got the Marauder's Mask, Invisibility Cloak, Hedwig, which is who is unfortunately dead now. Um, yeah, let's see, Deathly Hollows. We we got those are gone except again for the Invisibility Cloak. He does not have the Sword of Gryffindor anymore, as far as I know. Um, and we'll see. It was unlikely that it was it was likely to return to Hogwarts. Yeah, Sirius Black. Where is it? Firebolt. Yeah, okay, he's got his Firebolt. Uh, and then geez, yeah, a lot of stuff, a lot of stuff. So Harry, Harry's a pretty, uh, pretty capable combatant. That took me 11 minutes to go over all this stuff. Now, hopefully, this will not take me anywhere near as long to go over for Percy. Uh, oh God, maybe not. Anyway, Percy Jackson is a 70-year-old demigod, son of Poseidon. He goes, he saves the day. Let's get into this. Percy is a demigod, immensely powerful individual, stated by multiple times, my multiple characters in the series in which he has appeared. It's one of those powerful demigods in the series. Okay, ADHD. Is Percy's supernatural alertness and clean senses keep him from or keep him ready for and alive in battle? It also lets him analyze his opponent's fighting style as well as pick up minor details about the opponents, such as where their muscle tension, so they can tell what direction they're attacking. This is one general trait of a demigod. Dyslexia. His brain is high for ancient Greek, so that doesn't matter. Dreams. You can have demigod-like dreams. Physical condition. Slow your roll a little bit. Physical conditioning. Enhanced strength. Being a demigod, showing incredible strength, more regular than a mortal. Uh, and one of the sons of the big three, Poseidon. Uh, he was able to knock out demigods with one hit, rip out the Imminentor's horn, able to deflect giant attack, giant's attacks, uh, topple a seemingly insurmountably strong polypemory, a, str a strangle a snake when he was a taller, and force the tip of Prophean's spear into the ground while the giant was running, causing the... Okay, so he's pretty physically strong. Enhanced durability... Uh, he was able to throw, uh, more durable humans as he was thrown to a solid rock by a giant, only managed to nosebleed and still later defeated multiple giants. Shook off a hard hit from the chest from an Olympian god Ares, speedily recovered from a dodgeball thrown by a, a giant, brushed off the whack in the chest by a giant, shook, uh, shook off hard hits from the titan Atlas, and withstood a hard blow from Kronos, Without the curse of Achilles, well, without the curse of Achilles and many other feats, Hanson agility. Very. Uh, we're not going to even go into that. We can assume he's pretty agile. Enhanced reflexes. Being a demigod, reflexes are faster than regular humans. He was able to deflect a bullet traveling at 1,700 miles per hour, even though he barely even seen the bullet in the Titan's curse. That that's a serious reflexes. Wit, he's quite intelligent in his own right, skillful in capitalizing on the surroundings. So both these, Harry Potter and him, are both very capable in terms of utilizing uh, their surroundings. Leadership, willpower, shown to be have great willpower. Fighting skills, naturally talented, excellent swordsmanship, combat. Uh, basically, being they're trained as they're trained as warriors, kind of at the camp. Again, it's still they're still people. They treat them as such, but they're trained as fighters. Curse of Achilles, he formerly had that, so we're not going to use it now. Empathy link. Um, in psychic connection with Grover, his uh, satyr friend. Wolf stare. During his training with Lupa and Percy, he mastered the wolf stare that says, no matter how bad you think you are, I'm worse, which is so intimidating it allows him to scare off gangsters. <laughs> That's an interesting little treat. Uh, eye of horse symbol. Percy has an image of the eye horse drawn on his palms, which allows him to summon Carter Kane whenever he is just speaking his name. Through per Though Percy can use it only once, Percy used this to get Carter and Sadie to Governor's uh, Grover's Island. Him and Annabeth. Uh, okay, wait. A minute. Though Percy can only use it can use it only once. Well, again, we're not going to use that then. Um, let's see here. So that's his that's his general abilities. His demigod abilities, being the son of Poseidon, water induced abilities. When in contact with or in the presence of water, he gains a disproportionate amount of strength, clarity, speed, blah blah. blah. It's equal to a god. 
won the state. He's also strong enough to snap Clarice's electric spear like a twig. And managed to contend with the god Ares. That's why he was able to do that. Lightning Thief, he was able to successfully disarm Luke, the most skilled swordsman in the Half-Blood camp for the last 300 years, uh, basically by dousing him in water. In addition, Percy can push the creek dur into the creek, uh, capture the flag, obviously, if he had four of Ares' children in rapid succession, including Clarice with ease. Uh, when the, uh, however, this only lasted... Uh, 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 managed to shear off a portion of Luke's shield with an enhanced... Uh, while well, once enhanced by water, demonstrating godlike strength. He also healed himself of the wounds. Hydrokinesis, basically water, kinesis, water manipulation. Now, to what extent? Uh, with the power of the sea within him, he control every form and great volumes of water, even be able to summon and heal wounds. Percy can control water to very high degrees, letting him to control 10,000 gallons of water in the demigod's files, but not nearly omnipotent as previously stated here. He can control it in order to make it explode, use it to grab something. Basically, he's got water kinesis, kinesis up to about 10,000 gallons, which is pretty, uh, which is pretty powerful. Uh, so, yeah, water simplification, which, uh, Percy can harder water in almost any shape. Uh, he can walk on water. He can increase the surface tension, uh, water breathing, water immunity, water propulsion, hydrokinesis, or, yeah, hydrogenesis. He can create water from his own power, though it takes much of his energy to do so. That's pretty good. Sailing skills, perfect bearing. Communication, automonesis, or automokinesis. Can summon hurricanes. Uh, limited, mind you. Uh, and other types of storms, which to extent can be controlled by them as yet by uh, his extent is uh, uh, controlling is yet not yet known. Hurricanes have been shown powerful enough to douse fires up by Hyperion, leaving powerful Titan vulnerable to attack. Electrokinesis limited when using this skill unintentionally on occasions. Aerokinesis summon up winds unintentionally. Geokinesis can generate earthquakes and consequences cause all occasions corruptions, but the control technique is less than the child of Hades. The hell? Cryokinesis. Can use, uh, can use cryokinesis to be able to use ice. I'll get that. Yeah. Toxicinesis can control and manipulate poisons. To That actually could make sense. Heat resistance. Mist control. Zoolinguism. Uh, can understand and talk to marine life, horses, and similar creatures. Uh, okay. And I'm not done yet. I have nebic abilities here. Temper. Oh, no. Never mind. No, he, that was a temporary ability. We're not going to do that. Magical items. He's got the Minotaur's horn. He attained that and killed the Minotaur. Supposedly killed his mother. Uh, he made a celestial bronze, gave him by children to fight, a uh, Chiron to fight monsters when uncapped. It's a three foot, oh yeah, the, it's a double bladed celestial broadsword. It's a sword, basically. Um, Legion's Eagle Seas from the Eagle, uh, from the Undead. What the hell is that? Uh, upper glasses. Medusa's head, they, that's been long gone. Uh, whistles, a special dog whistle made. Of seeing ice that is cool in the river sticks, given to him a Quincy to summon Miss Olaya Shout. No, okay, it doesn't matter. Uh, Wish Watch Shield. He's got that. We know that. Nemean Lion's Pelt. Tamed it when he planned the death of me. He sacrificed it. Doesn't have it anymore. Sand Dollar. Uh, okay. Herm's Multivitamins. Or Hermes Multivitamins. You know, any, uh, these multivitamins make the person who ate them immune to nearly any attack, which is used by Annabeth during the Sea Monsters. Uh, during the sea monsters to turn Percy back into a human after she sir uh, series turned him into a guinea pig. Good to know. Chameleon armor. It only works from a distance. Uh, basically, kind of, uh, I'm guessing like a loyal like a chameleon. Uh, I've got the shoes of Hermes. Okay. I'm almost at the 20-minute mark. I haven't even gotten to the battle. Normally, this doesn't take me that long because normally I can get through stuff. But, Jesus. Okay. So, these two face off. I don't know. Uh, what would be the reason? You can make the argument that Hogwarts, that these two, actually, you can make the argument they exist in the same world, honestly. There's nothing saying the gods don't exist in Harry Potter. Um, so, <sighs> let's say that during the whole Horcrux thing, during the whole, uh, half, not half blush, friends, uh, oh god, what was the last one? What was the last one? Deathly Hollows. During Deathly Hollows, when they're out, you know, trying to find the Horcruxes and destroy them, uh, they come across Camp Half Blood and they're like, okay, what's this? And it's like, look, we don't want any trouble. And then something happens, and then we're, push comes to shove. Percy and him are squaring off. So right off the physically, Percy's got the edge. Hand to hand combat wise, Percy's got the edge. Basically, this is not a fight that Harry can allow to. And we're gonna give Harry all of his abilities up until like you know when he's an adult. But we're gonna put him with the kid by just for the sake of this fight, uh, just for the realistic scenario. Um, 
But, um, yeah, Harry can't let this kid get in close. Because if he lets this guy get in close, he's done. He can kill him in a heartbeat. So, and Harry, Harry, both these guys are perceptive. Both these guys can really discern pretty quickly that they win an opponent is something they shouldn't be taking on on their own or, you know, they're out of their league. Harry, but Percy, from what the description, Percy could do that faster than Harry could. Uh, that being said, Harry's got more than enough tricks up his sleeves. He's going to, you know, stupid boy, you know, uh, you know, throws that uh, Percy. Percy just blocks with a shield and comes in. Uh, try, you know, attack starts, you know, starts trying to attack Harry. Harry's keeping him at a distance. Um, he tries using the freezing curse, freezes him temporarily. Percy, using probably like height his water kinesis from like nearby shoot, comes in and like, you know, just boom, <laughs> guy grab, blasts Harry, just boom, Harry gets blasted by water. Spell wears off, he comes in, comes in again, whoop, boom, cracks the ground with a strike. Harry's just now like, Expelliarmus, disarms him. So now his sword's gone, but he's still got his shield. Smacks into Harry. Harry goes flying. Harry's just, ah. So now now Harry's uh, going to uh, gonna have to throw out other things. Expecto Metrano! I don't know. I don't, I'm not exactly sure how he would do it. But he, he'd probably use that for, um, uh, for you know, just for cover, if anything. And granted, a giant glowing stag would definitely throw Percy for a second. Just, great, he fought against... A number of Greek monster, but still, a giant glowing stag, I think that might be at least a semi-new one on him, but he, even then, he's just like, okay, and then just blast through the stag real quick. Uh, he comes in, brings water in, just come and throws it at Harry, who uses a shielding charm. It was, it, stated, it was stated that his shielding charms were some of the best around. Blocks that a bit, and then just uses a shattering curse. Shatters Percy's shield. Percy's now like, oh, you son of a... And then he starts... Using using a little bit of the ice manipulation, starts freezing uh, the freezing around Harry. Now Harry's like kind of getting boxed in here, so Harry's you know breaks the ice, but then Percy comes in and just boom smacks right into him. So and that and he just uh, kind of decks uh, Harry Potter and just uh just oh uh, you know Accio Fireball comes in all of a sudden the fireball just comes in and just whooshes past freaking um whooshes past freaking. Uh, Percy says, what the? And then he smacks him in the face. He's just, ah! And then Perry gets on there and just starts flying around. Starts, you know, attacking from a distance now to stupefy. And, you know, just atta attacking with the stuff that he can attack with from a distance. Then he tries, maybe, then he tries, I'd imagine, the Impervious Curse. Impervious? Um, trying to basically control Percy. Percy can feel his body starting to move on its own. But remember, this is like, he's partly a god and he's half god and he's got a pretty strong will so i imagine he'd be one of those people who could resist the uh it's it's the control curse I, it's impervious curse whatever point being that curse i believe he'd be one of those people who could resist that curse granted he'd struggle for a little bit but then he'd be like ah no 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 it's like you're not the only one who can fly <laughs> then he comes in with our boots of shoes of hermes and just flies up now he's chasing after Harry like crap and Harry's just crap 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 uh, Harry just keeps throwing out spells at him, tries to maybe transform his shoe, then he does a transfiguration curse on his shoes, and Percy only goes flying, luckily he catches himself with the, um, with the water again, just, whoa, now it's like, it's, it's uh, but and he's gotta get Harry out of the air, so now, with the limited control he's got, uh, he does bring f someone forth, uh, Atomo Kinesis, uh, someone to hurt, uh, someone a storm coming in, uh, just run. He, and it's it's hard for him to control, but he's bringing it in, and now Harry's just whipping around in the sky, just crah, ah, and then a little bit of lightning comes, strikes the broom, breaks the broom. Harry gets shocked. He still he's he nearly falls to the ground. He's able to use the reducto, I believe it was a reducto or whatever the curse was that I can't remember off the top of my head at the moment. Just repel him so he doesn't hit the ground, but he still hits it. He's you know he backs up, he's healing, and all of a sudden he's he's suddenly getting a little. He's the ground suddenly shaking. So now little geokinesis here. Granted, limited. Actually, I think. Actually, no, that did not say limited. That did not say. Everything else on here says limited. The generating earthquakes and activating volcanic eruptions. That didn't say limited. Uh, <laughs> Granted, it's less than half of the. It's less than. Uh, uh, less than the control of someone that'd be a child of Hades. But still! So that means he doesn't have limited control. He's got control of doing that crap. So now it's just Cherry's just, whoa! Then uh, then Percy just comes in again, water brushes him again, just grabs him. Harry tries to you know throw up a hand out there and you know do a do a a, um, a wordless or wandless magic. Percy just kind of 
Whatever it would be, I don't know what it would be. It would probably be like something that throws him back or maybe puts a spell on him, tries to curse. He tries maybe the Crucius curse, and then, you know, now Percy just, like, ah! Uh, ah, he freezes Harry there, just, ah! And then Harry's just, uh, now they're both kind of stuck. So Harry's torch is like, let me go. He's like, let me go, maybe I'll let you go. And then just like, and then so they're basically, ah, Percy's crawling. Grrr! And then basically he just melts the water and just, throws Harry against the tree and just knocks him out. So why does Percy win this fight? Well, Percy's half god. Now, that doesn't give him the automatic win. In fact, Harry's got a lot of versatility to him. Harry's got a lot of tricks up his sleeves. Could have given him the boils. Uh, that would have been weird, but he could have healed those boils, honestly, I feel like, with the healing water reveal, the vitakinesis. Uh, so he could do that, probably. Uh, he could do a lot of different offensive things, but Percy's got a lot... Percy's physically taken a lot more hits and harder hits than Harry has. So he's able to deal out and take a lot more damage and dish out a lot more damage. If this fight gets at all, if, if Percy gets even a couple blows in on Harry, like literal like punch, punch blows, Harry's down for the count. Harry can take a good licking, but when you're dealing with actual individuals who are just gigantic monsters that, and you can just be thrown to a rock by a giant and come out with just a nosebleed and beat several giants later on, it's not a fair comparison when you're talking about a straight-up fist fight. Harry, though, has the ability to keep him at a distance, but Percy can also fight at a distance pretty well. So it comes down to who's got who's got the more who's either got the better usage of their skills versus who's just got the more powerful abilities. And I would say that Percy has the overall more powerful abilities because he's able to literally affect the weather itself. He's able to literally summon hurricanes. He can manipulate water itself. He can heal himself with water. He's already a trained physical fighter. Harry's a trained duelist. He's dealt with the dark arts uh, a lot. But a lot of his stuff aren't really, you know, killing uh, killing um, curses. or Not that, uh, killing curse. But aren't exactly kill, uh, or lethal abilities and all the and he's gone up against plenty of powerful individuals but a lot of most of them were either human or just slightly above human in terms of their durability percy is far above human and durability so he could take most of the hits harry could probably dish at him pretty well he'd be i i imagine he's got enough willpower plus being a god to resist the control curse i'm not going to try to imperious imperious pervious and the crucible curse i do think would work for a little bit but i think per, uh, percy could muscle through it uh, so that leaves like things like the Protonus, the Shattering Curse, um, which again I can't remember the name off the top of my head, um, the Disarming Charm. Uh, if he were to try to, if he tried to use Avada Kedavra, that would work probably. Uh, well, actually, you know, I can't even say if that would work or not because what is the effect? Does that have an effect on a god, even a half god? So I would, I would imagine that I would imagine the god part. I imagine it'd be like when uh, Voldemort used him against him in the. Um, in the Deathly Hollows, um, and the, the last time he used it on him, when he actually allowed it, he basically Harry kind of wound up in a limbo because he was partly a Horcrux. I think the God in it, I think he would like be temporarily knocked out, uh, or like in, you know, like in a state of limbo. But the God in him, his dad would probably go visit him and stuff like that. Maybe Hades would be there and stuff like that. It's like, look, just go. You're a God. Show this punk was uh, who's boss. So I think it'd be something like that. I think it might temporarily work, but I can't say for certain. But yeah, Percy's just a trained fighter, like a legitimate trained fighter. He's God. He's got godlike abilities. He's got God knows how many elemental abilities, including hydrokinesis, vitakinesis, um, hydrogenesis, creating water, storm kinesis, basically, electrokinesis, aerokinesis. The grants a lot of these are limited. So cryokinesis, toxikinesis, geokinesis, heat resistance, and mist control. And seriously, yeah. Um, and those are just far more devastating abilities than what Perry has, uh, at least comparatively when you look at them, uh, or, or at least consider what they do. But yeah, I give this to Percy. I'll go about seventy-five percent of the time. And the reason I say that is Harry could easily just seize him up, um, you know, slow him down, basically incapacitate him long enough to basically count as a victory, but. I think Percy outmuscling most of his spells is going to be the likely scenario most of the, uh, most times. But what do you think? Do you think different? Uh, if you do, that's cool. Put in the comments below. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Like, comment, share, subscribe. I went way too long in this video. 
Uh, if you like what you see here uh, and you like to see more, put, uh, uh, click like and subscribe. Um, I usually would win Star Wars Superhero Magic. What if anything I do on the channel, put in the comments below. Let me know. I'll do a review of it at some point. Um, and if you'd like us to review something, put in the comments below. I'll do a review of that at some point. So, what if on Sunday, box office Sunday, I'll probably see another movie. Probably, I think I'm going with The Drift on Tuesday. And, yeah, basically usual week. Uh, so, yeah, stay tuned for those. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you folks next time.